Live from Mark Stadium on the campus of Walnut Hills High School, it is time for high school football as the 1-0 Warriors of Winton Woods travel on the road for their Eastern Cincinnati Conference opener against the 0-1 Eagles of Walnut Hills. A warm welcome to those of you watching on Waycross Community Media. I'm Jonathan Schwab. We'll hear from my broadcast partner, Chris Mead, in just a moment as Winton Woods continuing their state title defense after a successful start a week ago. Looking for their first win is Walnut Hills and also the home opener for Walnut Hills as they begin their 2022 home schedule. As I mentioned, Winton Woods winners a week ago in their season opener, a 39-16 win over Trotwood Madison last Friday night. Winton Woods led 32-0 after three quarters and cruised to the victory. Quarterback Van George, two touchdown passes to Carlos Cox Jr., 25 and 43 yards on those two scores. Overall, the signal caller George, three touchdown passes to open the campaign and a routine victory for the Warriors. Walnut Hills. They fell last week in their season opener, 45-7 at Withrow. That game was last Thursday at Withrow. It was a 21-0 third quarter that was the undoing of Walnut Hills as they scored their lone touchdown in the second quarter. It was a two-yard touchdown reception by tight end Jack Samarco. They were within 17-7 at the half, unable, though, to mount a second-half comeback. That was the... Battle of Duck Creek Road, week one for Walnut Hills. They come back home now to open that home schedule tonight in front of the Walnut Hills fans. As both teams out of their respective locker rooms and we're just moments away from the opening kickoff of this matchup. Chris Mead joining me for the broadcast tonight and Chris for Winton Woods coming off that state championship last year. Pretty smooth sailing a week ago in their season opener against Trotwood Madison. They're just looking to continue momentum. Author a new story, it's a new season, but also taking lessons from a maximum successful 2021 season in terms of winning that state championship. Walnut Hills, meanwhile, building the foundation from the ground up and looking for something to feel good about, taking their shot at one of the best in the state tonight. Well, for Winton Woods, the hardest thing to do is to repeat as champions, and they can learn their lesson from last year and build upon that, and they proved to be the same as they were last year by beating Trotwood. For Walnut Hills, they gotta forget about last week and just move forward. This is the opening night for their home game. Their seniors are happy, they're proud. This is the beginning of the end, unfortunately, for them. They just wanna make a strong start. And just wanna forget about last week and move forward. Each week, each season, a new chapter, and that's how each of these teams will come in tonight. Winton Woods in the road white uniforms with the blue helmets, blue pants, blue numerals. Walnut Hills in the home navy blues with the yellow helmets and the navy blue pants, the white numerals. Winton Woods won the toss. They elected to receive. They will go from left to right this evening to begin our contest. As back deep to receive the opening kickoff for the Warriors, it'll be Jermaine Matthews and Casey Spears teeing the ball up at the 40-yard line right now to get us underway. And it'll be Zubin Duru, the 5'7", 140-pound sophomore for the Eagles. Gorgeous night for high school football in southwestern Ohio. White cloud cover, plenty of sunshine, 78 degrees. Lights in the stadium not even on just yet, unnecessary. The opening kickoff is squibbed by Dewar and picked up by an up man at the 30. Ryan room on the perimeter and Winton Woods will start with excellent field position near their own 45 yard line. We'll get our first look at the Winton Woods, Winton Woods offense led by starting quarterback Van George. Van George. 
220 pound junior. You will have James Minor Jr. ran for 95 yards a week ago behind him in the pistol formation. Three receivers, two to the low side. The dummy snap count, everybody looks over to the near sideline. The head coach for Winton Woods, Chad Murphy in his second season. And there'll be a sweep coming to the near side. Casey Spears trying to find some running room and he'll pick his way into Walnut Hills territory for a gain of seven. It'll be second and three. That was a nice job by Winton Woods, the play action there and then the sweep. By the linebackers in the stands, picked up seven. And we saw right off the bat, Chris, the dummy snap count get to the line of scrimmage, and that allows the coaching staff to evaluate what's coming, and this time they go right to it, and this time Mino has running room inside the 35 and down to the 33-yard line, a quick 15 for James Miner Jr. and a first and 10 for Winton Woods. Excellent job by those three front guys in the offensive line, the center and the two guards, just moving forward, pushing their guy out of the way. George will keep this time on first and 10. He'll pick up a yard. It'll be second down and nine from the 32. Getting in on the tackle for Walnut Hills, Murphy Tilk. Second and nine, opening possession of the match. A minute 15 in from Mark Stadium. Now officials will blow the action dead. We have a timeout on the field. And it is an injury timeout as there's a man down on his back at the 26 yard line of Walnut Hills. We mentioned Chad Murphy in his second season at Winton Woods. Chris, you can't do a whole lot better than winning a state title in your first season. Obviously though, the program in a very good place under second year head coach, Chad Murphy. Excellent place, can't do better than win a state championship last year and then, like I said, alluded to in the, in the pregame, the hardest thing to do is to win a second championship back to back, but I think these guys are capable of it. And so much of it is you do want to learn from what got you where you wanted to get and where you got to, and at the same time, that's over. Right. It's, that's the hard part. It's in a completely new chapter. You, the injured man was Deshaun Hoskins, 5'10 sophomore for Walnut Hills, and he was able to hop up and jog off the field under his own power. 10.44 remaining in the opening quarter. Second down and nine for Winton Woods as they have driven from their own 45 to the Walnut Hills, 32. Three receivers, one tight end. Play fake for George. He has a man open on the far side, and it is caught inside the 10 and taking on tacklers at the five-yard line. Excellent bootleg play action. They got the guy in the middle of the layer. He kind of got lost in the coverage, and they found him. That's Tremar Harris, I believe, on the reception, a gain of 27, and it is first and goal for Winton Woods at the five of Walnut Hills. Looks like they went with a little bit of a hurry up there. No huddle on this opening possession, and again, the dummy snap down. Spears and Harris are the receivers to the near side. Pistol look. George will hand off to the deep man. It's minor off left tackle, and he will cruise in the end zone. Touchdown, Winton Woods, as the Warriors go right down the field. Five plays on their opening possession, and they have a 6 nothing lead. I loved it. They had a two tight end set, just let the big hog mollies go to work, and they got back, just followed right through. You have to think, they don't appreciate being called big uglies, right? <laughs> they, that was a thing of beauty if you're an offensive lineman. Nothing better than making a man move. <laughs> Winton Woods did have success going for two a week ago against Trotwood Madison, and they will here. Again, two receiver look near side. Double tight end to the far side. Minor, the deep setback. Now he'll motion to the left of the shotgun quarterback. 
and George will keep on the fake, and he is spun down. Penetration in the backfield. The two-point conversion is no good. So with 10.23 to go in the first quarter, Winton Woods with a 6-0 lead on Walnut Hills. And you have to believe that when you win the toss and you say, we want the ball, with the exception of that two-point conversion, that's everything you want for Winton Woods. It was a statement, and the way they did it was a statement. I believe it was only one pass on that whole entire play. Everything else was runs right up the middle. You gotta make you feel good if you're at the offensive line. And when that quarterback is a running threat, that does so much to open up your running game. Absolutely, the read option, the RPOs, everything comes alive. So now we'll get our first look at the Walnut Hills offense. Looking to improve on the seven they put on the board last week in the season opener, the loss to Withrow. Still a young group offensively, some experience. They were even younger last year on the offensive side of the ball. And 23 to go, first quarter, 6-0. The Winton Woods with the advantage. And Casey Spears, who does quite a bit of everything for this Winton Woods squad. He will kick it away. Two men back deep for Walnut Hills. And it will be a squib to the near side, caught on the fly at the 35. And nice. Dylan Brogan will break some tackles out to his own 49. So both offenses starting with outstanding field position in this opening quarter. You know, if you're an up man on the kick return team, you kind of figure you're going to be blocking. But in this game, they're getting a chance to actually prove their, their ball handling skills. Nice little run right there up the, up the field. So after Winton Woods went down the field on a five-play, 55-yard touchdown drive, Walnut Hills will open their first offensive series with the football right under that yellow WH logo at midfield at their own 49. TJ Nelson, the starting quarterback. He has three receivers, two to the near side, one to the high side, tight end Jack Samarco offset to the far side. And it's a pitch that hits the turf and the ball is recovered by Walnut Hills all the way back at their own 44. Now one official on the far side did signal incomplete, but it looked like it was a backwards toss. And indeed, Chris, it is going to be called an incomplete pass, so that is a break for Walnut Hills. Instead of second and 15, it'll be second and 10. Huge break for Walnut Hills. From here, it looked like a backwards pass, but I was seeing something different down the field. If I'm a quarterback, I don't want that because you're killing my stats, but Overall, for Walnut Hills, they'll take the second and 10. Yeah, they had four turnovers last week. They can't have the same outing this, this week. On second and 10, swing to the far side is reeled in in Winton Woods territory at the 48-yard line. That was a really nice route by the slot receiver. Just pivot his foot, turned around, ball's right there. Nice pitch and catch. Israel Bradford with the reception. Third and seven, again, Nelson to pass, rolling, extending the play, he's in trouble, and he will just take the ball out of bounds. Terrific pursuit on that near side as he was being hassled and bothered by Landon Anderson. And it will be fourth down and 11 after a loss of four. Really nice pursuit by the defensive end there, just getting around his man and not letting up, find the, using the boundary as another tackler. So the ferocious Winton Woods defense forces a three and out. And Casey Spears will wait at his own 15-yard line for the punt from Juan Cruz Garcia. Cruz Garcia extends the hands and a snap is over his head. Rolling back inside the 20, he's able to pick it up, but he is immediately engulfed as on the play, Charles Johnson with the pursuit, and Winton Woods with 9.22 left in this first quarter, leading 6-0, will start in the red zone on their second possession. Costly penalty, not penalty, sorry, turnover. 
in that situation. And now your defense is having backed in the corner against his motor of an offense. George in the shotgun. Again, hard snap count. And as a road team, this is everything you want. You, you want to take that home crowd out of the game as early as you can. Energize your visiting fan base. George will hand off, sweeping the far side. Trey Cornish to the edge. Bowie's a defender near the goal line. Did he break the plane? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Trey Cornish, the Georgia Tech recruit with a vicious 17-yard touchdown run. And it is 12-0 Winton Woods. Great, Trey Cornish is picking up where he left off last week. Nice little sweep again to the, to the left-hand side. Offensive line did its work. The tight, the tight end blocking was tremendous. Sealing the edge, just letting their man run free. Winton Woods will again go for two. Two receivers to the far side, and George will look over to his offensive coaching staff. Looks like a little bit of confusion. George will hand off Cornish. Cornish trying to pile his way over the plane. His offensive linemen say he made it. Do the officials concur? They do. Two-point conversion run, Trent Cornish, and it is 14-0 Winton Woods, and that abbreviated 17-yard touchdown drive all about Trey Cornish. Excellent running by Trey Cornish, lowering his shoulder when need be. But you got to give credit to the offensive line, especially those tight ends. Just sealing the edges, and especially on that two-point conversion, it was the same play. It was a one-two set, so that means there's one running back, two tight ends, and they just went to the left-hand side, the strong side. I think if you're Walnut Hills, you got to put, you got to shift your defense over to that strong side until you can stop it. Uh, and you can see where the challenge would be for Walnut Hills because of the late shifting. You shift right before the snap as an offense. You're changing defensive responsibilities, and. Then the ball snapped, and if you don't, as a defense, communicate efficiently and have a trust and an understanding, that offense is going to put you in some really difficult lines. Absolutely, absolutely. It's always knowing who your man is and who your assignment is, communicating when that changes. So, in conclusion, communication is the key to a successful relationship. Yeah, in sports and in life. Absolutely. Last year, Winton Woods won the matchup between these two teams, 21-0. But it was just a 7-0 game going to the fourth quarter. A much stronger Winton Woods start. Two touchdowns in a minute nine span, and they already had a 14-0 advantage. As Spears will kick it off, and again, a short kick squibbed and picked up by an up man at the 29-yard line. And again, Walnut Hills will have excellent starting field position at their own 42 as that ball was scooped up by Zion James and taken back 13 yards. So now this feels like a pretty critical drive early on for Walnut Hills because Winton Woods takes the opening kickoff, they drive for a touchdown, they force a three and out, then the snap over the punter's head on fourth down, the one play touchdown drive, and all of a sudden, it's 14 nothing. and if Walnut Hills can't put something together here, it starts to increase the weight of the moment on them. Shotgun for Nelson, option left, he will keep, and he is met and will settle for a three yard game. And if you're Walnut Hills, that's fine. You want positive plays, put yourself in second and third and manageable. Exactly. The most important thing is just getting the simple things done right and just moving moving the ball forward. You know, three yards is fine. Three yards on average is okay for a run. The game's not at hand yet. Second and seven, four receivers, three to the far side. Inside handoff, all kinds of penetration. Winton Woods blowing that play up in the backfield as the handoff was taken and aborted almost immediately by that penetration. A loss of a yard, it'll be third down and eight. 
I think here you want to get your star player involved, and that's Jackson Marco. Try and get him something easy, maybe a bubble screen, just something to get the ball in his hands so he can move forward and move up the ball. That was Mikey Jones on that loss of yard, and it is third down and eight for Walnut Hills at their own 44. Again, four receivers. Three to the far side. Nelson will roll that way. Lobs it downfield. Has a man open, and the pass is reeled in at the Winton Woods 43, stepping out of bounds on the far side. A key third down conversion when they needed it at Walnut Hills coming up with it. Excellent, and that breathes some life into their offense. They found the guy pushing over the zone in the middle of the field. Perfect bootleg. Nicely done, Walnut Hills. Uh, Nelson drops the snap, picks it back up, but by the time he recollected the football, he was out of time. A loss of five back to the Winton Woods 48. It'll be second and 15. Just got to forget about it, get to the next snap. Both teams, no huddle in the offensive look. And we have a flag down as whistle stopped the play. I believe that's our first flag of the game. It is. There hasn't been a whole lot of laundry on the field so far. In fact, the flag's been waved off. So obviously one of the officials anticipating that he would be necessary and then discovering not the case. Trying to check and make sure it's still there. <laughs> Second and 15, low snap, bobbled. Nelson picks it up, and now he'll run. Stutter step inside the 45, and he will make chicken salad out of that play. A gain of eight. It'll be third down and seven. That play looked like it was dead from the beginning when it was bobbled, but quarterback made the most of it, picked up three positive yards from the previous line of scrimmage. Just over five minutes in, 14-0 Winston Woods lead. Third and seven, Walnut Hills at the Winton Woods 40. Twin receivers each side. Single back to the left of the shotgun quarterback, Nelson. Four-man rush. Now Nelson will look left. He will look to run for the first down, and he will be very close. I believe he has it as Nelson collided with a support staffer on the Winton Woods sideline. If they're marking at the 33, and that's what it looks like, Chris, that should be good for a new set of downs. Yeah, it was a nice run by T.J. Nelson. Getting the outside, play looked like it was broken down, but he found some daylight, made the most of it, and just scampered for that first down. And indeed, it's a first and 10, and a quick snap handoff to Jones. Winton Woods was ready for it. He is stoned at the line of scrimmage. I think Walnut Hills was trying to get him off sides. They had a man running onto the field. It's a great idea if it works. If it works, yeah. <laughs> Second and 10, Walnut Hills at the Winton Woods, 33-yard line. Three receivers to the far side. Good snap. Nelson will roll to his right. Lobs it far side, incomplete. Some contact over on that far side as he was looking for Jack Samarco, and he was blanketed at the 31-yard line of Winton Woods. It will be a third down and 10 for the Eagles. Don't want to jink one on Hills, but they've been perfect on third down, I believe, this drive. Nelson claps the hands. It's a five-man rush. Lobs it down the far seam. Adjustment incomplete. Two flags down as just what you said, Chris. Look for that big body in Samarco. Nelson did that, and it looked like the defender on the play was not in a position necessarily to adjust as well as the receiver, which you see all the time. And it may be a fresh set of downs for Walnut Hills as a result. Yeah, the defensive back covering Jackson Marco, he got a little antsy. Didn't really need to didn't really need to put his hands on him quite yet. He had coverage over the top trying to break up the pass. But nevertheless, the chains are moving. It is a 15-yard mark off, and it is a first and ten for Walnut Hills at the Winton Woods 18-yard line. 
pitch to the near side, nearly lost, and then taken down is the running back on the play, Zion James. Good pursuit again for Winton Woods. They are so aggressive at the point of the pass, second and long. After the loss of three, second and 13 at the Winton Woods 21 yard line. 520 left, first quarter, 14 nothing. Winton Woods with the lead. Nelson lobs the swing pass far side, has Jones who tries to split two defenders and will be twisted down after a gain of a yard, maybe just half a yard. He's back at the 21, so it will be a third down and let's call it a long 12, probably in two down territory here for Walnut Hills. Yeah, you gotta get points here. Enough. No matter what, touchdown be great. Just keep it in one score game. Ball needs to reach inside the nine yard line. Nelson has time, steps up in the pocket. Now he'll spin to his left, fading away. Has a man open, but cannot get the ball there as he was throwing against his momentum. Trying to get it to Mikey Jones at the 20. There were four Winton Woods Warriors chasing him, and it's fourth down, and it looks like the field goal unit may be coming out. It is going to be a field goal attempt for Zubin Duru. He made his only extra point attempt a week ago. This will be a 39-yarder, and... He is not going to be able to get that one where it needs to go. It is no good as the operation and the special teams as a whole early on for Walnut Hills. They're struggling a bit in that aspect. And as a result, Winton Woods able to keep Walnut Hills off the board. 427 left in the first quarter. 14-0 the Winton Woods lead. And Winton Woods will take over on their third offensive series. Walnut Hills had a, had a pretty decent drive, but just bobbled snaps, bobbled tosses, uh, pushed, them, you know, delayed them and made them go reverse. 12 play drive for Walnut Hills, but they're kept off the board as that Winton Woods defense bowing their backs once the ball reached the red zone. They will start first and 10 at their own 20, will the Warriors. Dan George getting his directions from the near sideline. Get the pistol formation, the two tight ends on the left-hand side again. Minor motions to the right of his quarterback. Quick swing near side, Spears in space. And he shows off the balance. Somebody walked the balance beam right there, and it was Casey Spears. A nice first down gain of seven, second and three. A light breeze on a gorgeous Friday evening in southwestern Ohio. Three man down front for Walnut Hills. George will put it in the belly of his tailback, Miner. Miner picking his way for a first and 10 out beyond the 35 to the 37 yard line. Gain of 10, and you've been on from the get go. Winton Woods is having great success in the trenches, creating spaces for their running backs. Absolutely, this three down set that Walnut Hills is going with is uh, not formidable against this offensive line. So right back to the running game and a nice bounce cut by Miner. Flag down, Miner down at his own 46. I, I think there's gonna be a hold. Somebody just loving their assignment a little too much. Looks like Winwood's is walking backwards. It is a hold against Winton Woods. And if communication is the key to a successful relationship, there's also value in knowing when to let go. <laughs> <That's> absolutely. 
I think they got on. I think they were holding Jackson Marco. He's trying to turn around when the guy was going around the right hand side, and they were not letting him. So the mark off will bring the ball back to the 34. May have been a legal use of hands. On first and 13, play fake. George lobbing deep far side. He has spears open. He will run under it at the 22 and take it to the house. KC Spears, 66 yards, touchdown, Winton Woods, and with 2.58 to go in this opening frame, it is all Warriors, 20 to nothing. KC Spears, he's a Swiss Army knife for this team. Kicks the ball, catches the ball, runs the ball, does everything. Occasionally plays a little quarterback. Again, Winton Woods will go for two. Shotgun for George. Minor the back behind him. Minor off the right side, puts the shoulder pads down and plows over the plane for the two-point conversion. Back-to-back -back successful two-point conversions for Winton Woods. We have 2.58 to go in the first quarter, and Winton Woods has it clicking on all cylinders. 22-0 they lead. Everything's going right for them on both sides of the ball, especially offense. Running the ball, doing a great job by Minor. Uh, we talked at the outset about how you can't do a whole lot better than a state championship, which is what Winton Woods did a season ago. But for a team that won a state title, you can make the case there's still some unfinished business in a couple senses. They started one and two last year. So, hey, let's get off to a better start. Well, I would say this qualifies as a better start and also finished third in the Eastern Cincinnati Conference a season ago. Conference opener tonight. I would say they're checking that box as well. Yeah, they have they have goals. They have uh, You know material that they want to use to encourage themselves to do better than, than last year Even they got a state championship. They want to win their conference. They want to start off 2-0 And of course they want to win another state championship Spears not looking remotely tired despite having a tremendously busy first quarter. He will squib it again, this time find some open space and it will dribble all the way back inside the 20. And the special team's coverage is pristine for the Warriors. Walnut Hills will take their third possession. Chris, some real positives for Walnut Hills on that last offensive series. Drove 12 plays into the red zone. Unsuccessful on the field goal attempt, but something that they can look to build on on this offensive drive. Yeah, they did a lot of things right on that drive. Unfortunately, it stalled out, but hopefully they can uh, capitalize on those positive this drive. Sweep to the far side and an ankle tackle made after a short game gain on Israel Bradford. He picks up a yard. I'll tell you what, Whitton Woods' D line is a steel trap. Nothing gets past them. They don't really blitz that much. They just utilize those down linemen. Occasionally they'll send in a linebacker. But the four down four man front is really working out for them. Second down and nine. Nelson to throw, steps up in the pocket, and he is in big trouble, and he is sacked. The four-man rush able to get home. It's a loss back to the 20-yard line. It'll be third and 16. Under two minutes left in the first quarter, third and very long. Third and 
15 for Walnut Hills. Nelson, pocket collapse and he escapes. And now he will try to get to the stitch. The flag is down. Nelson is very close to the marker. Listen, they're moving the chains. We have to wait to see what the laundry is regarding. Can't move forward until you clean all that laundry up. And now the sticks are moving, holding against the defense. The penalty will be declined. First and 10, Walnut Hills. In this first quarter, the most effective offense for the Eagles has been the legs of TJ Nelson. And a quick throw on first and 10. I like those quick throws because it's sort of like a paper cut. You can just, you know, dig and dunk down the field, play their off coverage, which, which Whitten Woods is playing, and to your advantage, and hopefully eventually make a, make a play action and go deep. Jack Samarco, a gain of three to his own 39 on second and seven. The running back, Jones, able to pick up a yard to the 40 before he was wrapped up and torn down. It'll be a third and six as we approach a minute to go in the opening frame from Mark Stadium. Nelson has Samarco open on the far side and he will make the catch and pick up the first down. And you can see the Walnut Hills coaching staff has identified what you talked about in the pregame. Get that big bodied Samarco one on one and exploit. Especially with a corner like that. Nice job, Jack Smokovic going down the field, pivoting, using his body almost as a, as, a, as a blocker, and just boxing out his man, catching that ball. So after the gain of 10 on third and nine, the handoff will go for six for Jones to the Winton Woods 45-yard line. You know, the Walnut Hills offense reminds me a lot of the Andy Reid Eagles offense, where they actually use the short pass to create the run. Nelson will keep off the right side, and he has an alley inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. It's a gain of 12, and again, those legs of the junior T.J. Nelson proving profitable for a new first and 10. The quick throw, looking for Samarco on first down, incomplete off of the white-gloved hand of the junior Samarco. 12 seconds left in the quarter. 22-0 the Winton Woods lead. Second and 10 for Walnut Hills from the Winton Woods 33. Nelson floats it near side and it is incomplete. What a hit by Dombiel Rogers as he separated the receiver, Mark Bronson, from the football. It will be third down and 10. Yeah. On third and 10, Nelson pumps in trouble, gets away from the rush, coming to the near side, high steps. He'll try to get the corner, he does. Can he get to the sticks? I don't believe he did as he steps out at the 25-yard line. It's a gain of eight, and that'll be the final play of the first quarter. It will be fourth and two for Walnut Hills when we open the second frame. A quarter owned by the road team. The defending Division II state champions, Winton Woods, with a 22-0 lead. The opening drive, Chris, driving down the field for a touchdown. Then they cash in on the failed punt snap. And after they were able to get the stop in the red zone on the next offensive possession for Walnut Hills, they showed off the explosive ability on the long pass play to Spears. Yeah, they've done a little bit of everything. The running game, beginning, and uh, then they showed that they had the long pass as well. So everything worked offensively for William Woods as well as defensively, just a four-man front, uh, not blitzing too much and just having their way. Although Wanda Hills has been uh, having some success on this drive. They've gone to Jackson Marco a lot, and uh, TJ Nelson has been using his legs nicely to uh, pick up first downs. Walnut Hills under second year head coach James Crook III. Try to build that foundation, find some morsels to feel good about, and build some momentum 
when you're playing well with the best in the state, you're going to have opportunities to build that momentum because you are going to be challenged. Fourth and two on the first play of the second quarter. Walnut Hills at the Winton Woods 25. Low snap. Nelson will look to run, and he has the room for the first down and more. Inside the 15, battling his way to the 12-yard line. T.J. Nelson had 57 rushing yards a week ago in the season opener against Withrow, and he's been a factor with the wheels in this first half. It's a gain on the play of 21 and a first and 10. Check it, a gain of about 13 and a first and 10. Nelson throws near side, looking for Samarco, broken up, incomplete. Beautiful play by Jermaine Matthews Jr., the Ohio State recruit, showing off the pedigree, second down. I, yeah, I think they switched coverages. Just to put Jermaine Matthew on Jack Samarco, so those uh, post routes, or the corner routes, I should say, are uh, a little bit tougher to catch now. Kind of a human fire extinguisher. There's a problem, let's send him to put it out. Yeah. Matthews, two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries in last week's season opening win over Trotwood Madison. On second and 10, Nelson fires to the far side, tipped in the air and incomplete. Talking about extinguishing the fire, Matthews clapping his hands in frustration as he had a chance to extinguish that entire possession. And it popped in and out of his hands. It'll be third down and 10. Check it, that may have been Cameron Calhoun, one, not seven. It was Calhoun who was frustrated that he could not finish off the INT. Winton Woods with a 22 nothing lead, Walnut Hills, in the red zone for the second time in this first half. Nelson claps the hands, takes the snap, option near side. Jones will angle near the 10 yard line. He'll be well short of a first down. It's a gain of a yard and a half. It'll be fourth and long. We saw earlier, Walnut Hills went for a field goal on fourth and long. Will they keep the offense out on fourth and eight? Timeout taken by Winton Woods. 10.58 to go in the second quarter. Winton Woods with a 22-0 lead. And even in games where you're having great success like Winton Woods is in this first half, you're still going to run into growth opportunities. And this is one of those. As a defense, you've got pride. You don't want to allow that other team to put points on the board against you. And they've got a chance to pick up a fourth down stop here in the red zone. Yeah, Wynn Woods' defense right now is hungry for that, for that shutout. They don't want to cost it no matter what, especially a touchdown. The three Winton Woods touchdowns scored by James Miner on a five-yard run, Trey Cornish on a 17-yard run, and Casey Spears on a 66-yard touchdown reception. Right now, the spotlight on the defense. Fourth down and a long seven. The ball has to reach between the three and the two yard lines for Walnut Hills. Four receivers, Samarco again, the long man on the near side. Low snap, Nelson floats it up for Samarco, it's intercepted. At the goal line and coming back is Calhoun down the near sideline. He's got speed, he's got blocking, and he has all kinds of field turf in front of him. He waves to his fans. And it is a 100-yard pick six touchdown for Cameron Calhoun. There are no flags on the field. It is 28-0 Winton Woods. Nice job by Jermaine Matthews just catching that ball and just taking it, taking it to the house the other way. The play call by Walnut Hills was a play call I would have called as well to try and put it up against the Jackson Marco in the end zone. Unfortunately, the blitz, the rushers got there, threw up his back foot, 
and uh, flowed the ball a little bit. Easy pick for uh, Jermaine Matthews, and then just took it to the house. There is a man behind the play on his back at the 48-yard line of Walnut Hills, a Walnut Hills player being attended to by the training staff. Cameron Calhoun, the University of Cincinnati verbal commit. I find myself wondering, the position coaches who recruit these young men, do you think they get alerts on their phone every time a kid that has committed to them does something that makes that coach look a little bit smarter? I think I would if I was their recruit. <laughs> Certainly an alert right now as Cameron Calhoun. A relatively routine catch as the ball a touch underthrown and then the shortest distance between two points is the direct route. And Cameron Calhoun, clearly he has taken geometry because he took the direct route down the near sideline and nobody got close on the 100 yard interception return for a touchdown. The injured man to his feet being helped off with support on either side. Looks like that is Isaiah Jackson for Walnut Hills. And you can see on the replay the convoy for Calhoun around the 15-yard line, taking a moment to wave to the Winton Woods fans who have made the trip to Walnut Hills tonight. Certainly you can appreciate the Fan friendly mentality. Gratitude is always in style. There does seem to be a large contingency of Wynn Wood fans here tonight. You get your fervent fans, and then when you win a state title, that doesn't hurt the fan base. No. Especially good weather tonight. Winton Woods will, for the fourth time in four touchdowns, go for two. George will hand it off right up the gut, stumbling to the goal line, and no good on the two-point conversion. Juan well, done did a nice job catching him by his ankles and uh, stopping a little bit short at the goal line. Looks like it was Cornish who was just short of the goal line. So, for those of you who appreciate conventional football scores, we've seen four two-point conversion tries, two good, two less than good, and in the end, it's like they just kicked four extra points. 10.38 left in the second quarter, 28-0, the Winton Woods lead over Walnut Hills. Eastern Cincinnati Conference opener for both teams. How can you not love the August start to high school football? We're early in the second quarter. They still don't have to turn the lights on in the stadium. It is nice when uh, nice weather like this, and it's not, not cold yet. And you know who really loves it? Whoever has to pay that electricity bill. They love it. I think it's public schools, so probably taxpayers. So all of us love yeah. it. We all collectively <laughs> love it. <laughs> I wonder with the squid kicks from Winton Woods, if you're Walnut Hills, do you maybe try to sneak one of your better returners up into that second or third level? I was thinking the same thing, try and maybe flip them. Spears, a harder squid kick. Zion James picks up at his own 37. He finds a lane, and now he's over midfield. Good return for James to the Winton Woods 49. And for the second time tonight, Walnut Hills will start right around midfield, this time in Winton Woods territory at the 49-yard line. With that interception return for a touchdown by Calhoun, this will be the 16th consecutive snap for the Walnut Hills offense. 
That last drive, 15 plays. They covered 64 yards. Pitch left, Jones. Jones picks up a couple of the 47 yard line. Second down and eight for the Eagles. First of a three home games in four stretch for Walnut Hills. On second and eight, delayed handoff off the right side. Jones with a nifty cut inside the 45 to the 42 yard line. His progress is slowed down by TJ Buckman. It'll be third and three. Third and three after a five yard run. Nelson will throw the quick flip to Bradford at the 40 and give credit to the defender. I think he's a yard short of the first down because of that efficient tackle made by Charles Johnson, the 5'11 junior. Yeah, Charles Johnson did a great job of staying with this man and just uh, doing a great tackle right at the numbers and making him uh, a yard short. Fourth and one, down 28. I would say that's a fairly obvious go for it situation. Keep an eye on the legs of Nelson. Empty shotgun set. Five receivers, three to the near side. Would Nelson scurry under center and try to sneak for it? Winton Woods with seven tight the last scrimmage and the snap goes over the head of Nelson, bounces back to him, and now he's gonna try to run for it and he's not going to get anywhere close. The snapping has been a challenge for Walnut Hills, and the moment that snap went over the head of Nelson, that play was in major jeopardy. Snaps have been an issue all night for Walnut Hills. Unfortunately, it comes at the worst time. A loss of five on the play officially. And after a 19-play hiatus, we'll see the Winton Woods offense again with 8.37 left in the second quarter. 28-0 is the Winton Woods advantage. Jonathan Schwab, Chris Mead on Waycross Community Media this evening. Spears motions near to far. George. Looks left, double move near side, and the pass is just a hair overthrown, looking for Tremar Harris at the Walnut Hills 21-yard line. Terrific attempt by Harris, full layout, second and 10. Yeah, Harris did a great job running that route. Nice speed, nice dive, nice effort. Just a little bit out of reach by, uh, by the quarterback. Second and 10 for Winton Woods. Cornish motions to the right of his quarterback. There's that late shift by the two tight ends. Sweep left Cornish. Stiff arms two defenders, gets to the sideline, goes airborne and he will have a first down after a gain of 13. Corner showing us all the skills tonight, you know, lowering his shoulder, using a stiff arm, nicely done. I do get the distinct sense he enjoys contact. He's not gonna shy away from it, that's for sure. First and 10, Winton Woods at the Walnut Hills, 42. 28-0, the Winton Woods lead. Ticking down to eight minutes left in the opening half of football. And just moments after I said, the lights aren't on yet. We have, we have lights. Cornish up the middle with a big hole. Cornish off to the races. Goodbye, touchdown. Winton Woods, Trey Cornish, 
I think his only disappointment is he didn't get to run anybody over on the way. He'll take the 42-yard touchdown instead. It's 34-0, Winton Woods. Yeah, one of the hills, they uh, had four down linemen, and then they brought in a linebacker on the uh, late blitz. The corner actually went right by. Uh, so ran right past the blitz by Walnut Hills and, uh, for a touchdown. Nicely done. Uh, Walnut Hills, like the strategy, unfortunately did not uh, result in what they wanted. And sometimes you give credit to the guys on the sidelines. As that's a terrific job of play calling by the Winton Woods coaching staff. They had the solution for what Walnut Hills brought. Yeah, they did. And give credit to Trey Cornish, too. I mean, he just has the speed right out of the gate, the explosiveness. He found the hole, made the cut, and just went right up field. Two-point conversion try for Winton Woods. Pump fake. George open near side. The two is good for Harris. It is 36-0 with 7.34 left in the second quarter. And, Chris, I love that play call because you talk about wanting to reward effort. And we saw on the opening play of this drive, Shamar Harris with Tremar Harris with a tremendous diving attempt that he just was not able to come up with on the deep throw from George on the two-point conversion play. They go back to Tremar Harris, and Harris gets his just rewards with the two-point conversion. Yeah, and Harris did a great job there. He was actually double covered, and he pivoted inside, brought the man on the outside in, and then cut to the outside and got himself open. Nicely done. Uh, like I always like to say, effort takes no talent. And yet, some would say effort is a talent. It's true. The one that I don't understand is you can't teach effort. Coaches don't like having to teach effort. They feel like they should not have to. But I've seen coaches have to teach effort. Yeah, it's, it's, it eventually becomes a mindset. Uh, and one universal truth that you see with the best teams, they're player-led. Mm -hmm. So you've got your coaching staff doing what they need to do, but the players are putting constructive pressure on one another to put out max effort. The kickoff from Spears will dribble out of bounds on the far side. So the officials who have not had much reason to throw flags in this first half, one will come out. And Walnut Hills will start this possession in a pretty significant hole. Down 36 nothing, but they have had decent field position in this first half. Winton Woods defensively, they have risen to the moment when called upon. Yeah, Vaughn Hills is down by a lot, but you just gotta take it play by play. Just pick up, you know, three, four, five yards each play, work your way down field, build upon that. Don't worry about what just happened, you know, the previous quarter and so far in the second quarter. Walnut Hills will start at their own 35-yard line. Confusion on the snap. Jones, it looked like he thought he was taking the snap himself and did. And he loses a yard back to his own 34. It'll be second and 11. Second and 11 for Walnut Hills. Nelson to throw, four-man rush. Has a pocket to step up and run. Makes a nice move, but perhaps an even better job in the open field by Landon Anderson after he got juked on the Nelson move. He managed to stay in the play enough to make the ankle tackle and keep it to a gain of six. Yeah, we were just speaking about, you know, effort and talent a little while ago, and Right there, it's evidence again that William Woods' defense not giving up on play, not giving up on tackle. Third and five. Walnut Hills at their own 40. Three receivers bunched to the near side. One-handed catch on the snap for Nelson. He'll roll to the near side. Running out of real estate, and he will just take the football to the Winton Woods sideline with him. Loss on the play for the second-year Walnut Hills starter. Loss of three, it'll be fourth down. Fourth 
Second time we've seen the punter Juan, Juan Cruz Garcia tonight. We have a timeout on the field taken by Walnut Hills. First timeout they have taken with 6.14 left in the first half. 36-0 the Winton Woods lead. Let's recap how we have gotten there. Winton Woods took the opening kickoff, drove down the field, five plays, 55 yards. It was James Miner Jr. with a five-yard touchdown run to make it 6-0 Winton Woods. After the Winton Woods defense forced a three and out, punt snap over the head of the punter. It took one play for, Wall for Winton Woods to cash in. Trey Cornish, a 17-yard run. After the two-point conversion, it was 14-0. Casey Spears, a 66-yard touchdown reception. It became 22-0. A 100-yard interception return for a touchdown for Cameron Calhoun made it 28-0. And most recently, Cornish again, a 42-yard touchdown run to take us to where we are now at 36-0. The Cruz Garcia punt, fluttering end over end, returnable for Spears from his own 29. Past the 40, he'll be stood up at the 43-yard line. 14 yards on the return for Casey Spears after a punt of 44 yards. 6.01 remaining in the second quarter. Winton Woods with the big lead, and they'll start with the ball after we see what the flag on the far side is about. Our officiating crew tonight, referee Mark King, umpire Dan Hill, line judge is Robert Cruthop, head linesman Ben Levin, and the back judge is Doug Cruthop. Personal foul against both teams, offsetting penalties. We're watching it unfold as the officials communicate it with us. And in the end, what Mark King told us was, it's a personal foul on everyone. Everyone has misbehaved. Pretty much the Oprah of penalty assignment. <laughs> First and 10, Winton Woods will start at their own 41 yard line. Still the starters for the Warriors. I imagine we may start to see some backups worked in, perhaps in the second half. Quick fling to the near side, Harris. Stutter steps away from one tackle and then shows off the strength, carrying another into Walnut Hills territory. It's a gain of 10 to the 48 of the Eagles and a first and 10. New set of downs for Winton Woods in Walnut Hills territory at the 48 yard line. Three receivers, one tight end offset far side. Single back pistol look. George will hand off to that lone setback and a, a big hole off the left side inside the 35 yard line. And it's James Miner all the way to the Walnut Hills 31, a gain of 17. Dan George, the 6'3", 220-pound junior, awaits the shotgun snap. He will hand off up the middle, and this time the Walnut Hills defense stands strong. They've had some difficulty, Chris, with the run fits that time. 
the fit was snug. Nice job. Yeah, the linebackers did a really good job plugging all the holes. They're ready for it. Uh, Rolling down towards the four minute mark left in the first half. All Winton Woods, 36 nothing the Warriors. Weed, Walnut Hills. Again, three receiver set, two to the high side. Harris, the lone receiver to the near side. Minor is the deep setback. George. Looking to throw. Rhodes it up far seeming the triple coverage. It is deflected and incomplete. Really nice play by Wana Hills. Convert all three of those defenders converging on the ball. Almost interception. Pass was intended for Casey Spears, and let's give due credit to Eric Terrell, the 5'9 junior who flew in to break the play up. It's third down. And a short 10 or a long 9. Sun reflecting off the building across the way from the press box. On this picturesque Friday evening. George to the crosser. Harris inside the 20. He has the first down and... Some extra change to the 19-yard line. Tremar Harris had four catches last week in the season opening victory over Trotwood Madison, and he has been featured with gusto in this second quarter. Yeah, Jamar Harris did a nice job just at uh, crossing route. They take a, you know, a little while to uh, develop, but Van George got the ball to him, and it was a nice pickup. 3.26 left, second quarter. 36-0, the Winton Woods lead. First and 10 for the Warriors at the Walnut Hills 19-yard line. The two receivers this time to the near side. Handoff up the middle, Miner picking his way inside the 10. First down and more to the six-yard line. James Miner Jr. looking at the power of Trey Cornish and saying, I can play that game too. Gain of 13. Yeah, James Miner did a great job right out of the middle. A nice job by the offensive line of Woods, especially the uh, the left guard just making that nice pull uh, and, and block to uh, Spear Miner an opening. Injured man for Walnut Hills down at the Walnut Hills 15-yard line. So the trainers will take a look at him. 3.08 remaining in the first half. Winton Woods won the coin toss, and they've been successful at most everything since the coin toss. The coin toss, they had no control over. The rest of this first half, they have commanded. Yeah, I would, Wynn and Woods has, is, is, if they're such a perfect game, they have uh, nearly played a perfect half. And this is how championship programs remain championship programs because the players who are going to be expected to carry the torch forward over the next year or two are the guys we're going to see in the second half. And when your stars take care of business in the first half, that allows your backups to get those valuable game reps because you can only learn so much in practice. If you can learn in game situations, that's only going to make your program so much better down the road. Yeah, getting those young guys experience, especially on Friday Night Lights, uh, is invaluable, like you said. Injured man was able to walk off the field under his own power. First and goal, Winton Woods. And it'll be Spears taking the snap from the quarterback position, and he will race to the goal line. Touchdown, Winton Woods. Casey Spears with his second touchdown of the first half. It's a six-yard run, and it is 42-0, Winton Woods. Casey Spears just does pretty much everything uh, they can ask a football player, literally. And uh, got a second touchdown there. The only thing we haven't seen him do in the first half is pick up a flag for an official. Other than that, he has been comprehensive. And he will stay at the quarterback position for the two-point conversion try. And he will keep again, and he will... 
deliver the blow at the goal line and keep on ticking. Two point conversion, good. Winton Woods rolling. They lead 44 0 with 244 remaining in the first half. That touchdown drive, seven plays, 59 yards. Casey Spears constructing his own football version of the buffet in the first half. He has a receiving touchdown. He has a rushing touchdown. He has a two-point conversion now. Yeah, he just does it all. All of that activity that he has shown off in this first half, and I would say the most impressive thing I've seen from him, if you remember the balance on that short pass earlier in this first half, he looked like somebody who if you were having a limbo competition, he's going to win, and not just win, he's going to dominate. Low to the ground, terrific balance. Yeah, excellent balance. The kick this time, a line drive fielded by Zion James at his own 26. He will work his way to his own 35 yard line. Walnut Hills will attempt to get on the scoreboard here before halftime. As we discussed earlier in the second quarter, they're just looking for something positive they can put on film so that they can say, okay, this is what we want to build off of going forward because this is just week two. It's early in the season. They have a lot, they still, the season's still theirs to take, and uh, every snap still counts. So they need to learn uh, from the positive, like you said, from the film sessions that they can gain from this game and uh, move forward. Four receiver look on first and 10 from their own 35. Screen look, and it is blown up. What a form tackle on Jones. Yeah, really nice job, especially the linebackers not getting uh, sucked into that screen and just staying with their man throughout. And uh, like you said, nicely done with that form tackle. Loss of one on the play, second and 11. 2.05 remaining in the half. <laughs> Nelson waits on the snap and he'll roll to his right. He's looking to run and he is wrapped up, taken down after no game. Yeah, Wayne Woods was not fooled by that. Direct snap. Just direct, um, direct run all the way. And again, nicely done. Pursuit of their man by uh, Wynn Woods defense. And once you take away the running of Nelson, it's fair to ask, where's Walnut Hills going offensively? On third and a long 10. Nelson in all kinds of trouble. Wrapped up, tries to throw it away. The ball did get back to the live scrimmage on the near side. There was no receiver out there. Wooden the officials say incomplete pass, fourth down. Yeah, Wooden Woods' pursuit off the ball, off the line of scrimmage is just amazing. They get right by their blocker and just right after Nelson. That can't be a good feeling as a quarterback when you think, I'm running away, so I should be getting away. And you realize, I'm not getting away. Yeah, I mean, Nelson's, even his drop back, by the time he gets to the end of his drop back, he's already said run for his life. Cruz Garcia from his own 22, clean snap. It's a high short kick. It'll hit at the 46 of Winton Woods and roll sideways out of bounds on the near side. Fifty-six seconds left in the first half. It is a punt of 19 
15 yards. If Winton Woods wants to add to their lead, they do have two timeouts. If they don't, I imagine Walnut Hills would not use their two timeouts. Yeah, I think they would keep them. Get back to the locker room, let the sun set, and see what you can accomplish in the second half. 44-0 the Winton Woods lead. Looks like it's still the starters on offense for Winton Woods on this late first half possession. Hand off up the middle and not much doing for Corning. So it looks like Winton Woods is going to be content, as I probably would be too. At 44 nothing, I can work with that. Yeah, 44 nothing is a comfortable lead going to the half. So the clock run out. Probably one more snap. I don't see the play clock. Looks like they will snap it one more time. George will hand off off left tackle. Cornish will stay in bounds. He has the first down to the Walnut Hills 43. But with 10 seconds left in the half, I believe we've seen the last of first half football from Mark Stadium. And indeed, Winton Woods, no urgency to add on to the lead. They certainly did enough work, though, in the first half of this ballgame. We have reached the intermission at Mark Stadium. The score, Winton Woods 44, Walnut Hills nothing. We'll be back when the second half is just about set to get underway here from the press box. This is high school football presented by Waycross. Let's take a time out to talk about educational athletics. That means the school sports are an extension of the classroom. Student athletes earn the privilege of participation in sports by succeeding during the school day first before they put on the team uniform after. Student athletes prove that with better attendance records, higher GPAs, and fewer discipline issues than non-student athletes. That's what it means to be a part of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association.
This is what defines us in Ohio. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Hi, I'm Bob Hoying. The life lessons that interscholastic athletics can teach kids are so much more important than wins and losses and will stay with them long after their playing days are over. Discipline, teamwork, sportsmanship, integrity, getting along with others and overcoming adversity can all be learned through school sports. The lessons that these student athletes learn through sports today will help them be prepared for wins and losses of life tomorrow. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association.
There's just one place where students are students first and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. There's just one place where a team is more than a group of individual agendas. It's a catalyst for demonstrating the potential of the collaborative spirit. There's just one place where players, coaches, and fans experience the exhilaration that happens when an entire community rallies behind the school team. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are more likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. In addition, high school sports help young people in Ohio develop the discipline and confidence they need to be leaders in life, even as they unite communities like nothing else. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Welcome back. It is halftime at Mark Stadium. Winton Woods leading Walnut Hills 44 0. Jonathan Traub, Chris Mead, our director Tony Suarez on Waycross Community Media in that first half. Comprehensive and dominant from the defending Division II state champions as they took the opening kickoff, drove for a touchdown, and continue throughout that first half to add on to that lead. Let's look at the first half stats. First downs, Winton Woods with 12, Walnut Hills with nine. The rushing yards tell a major part of the story. 158 rushing yards for Winton Woods, just 35 for Walnut Hills. Passing yards, 121 for Winton Woods, 39 for Walnut Hills. Overall, 279 to 74 total yard advantage for Winton Woods. However, Walnut Hills had enough success moving the ball that they actually outsnapped Winton Woods 42 22 in the opening half. But those 42 snaps did not translate to points. And ultimately, Winton Woods able to find the end zone every time they had the football until the final possession of the half when they got the ball with under a minute left and chose to run out the clock. Chris, Winton Woods from beginning to end showing off what made them a state champion a year ago. Yeah, if you're Winton Woods, you have essentially a perfect perfect first half. Uh, Trey Cornish and Minor, the duo in the backfield, did a great job. Offensive line did... I mean, just, just a marquee job moving guys out of the way for them. Uh, Walnut Hills, like you said, they've had decent drives, but things have stalled. Either it was a botched snap, a uh, fumble, or um, an inter interception. So there are things Walnut Hills can improve upon, learn upon. Uh, and when it was, just, you know, a great job and, and looking forward to the second half. And that's something that you see often with programs rebuilding that foundation like Walnut Hills is under second year head coach James Crook III. You very often see where they're able to put some positive plays together. However, it's that one play here and there that makes all the difference. And when you're playing against an opponent, the caliber of Winton Woods, you don't have the luxury of making a mistake here and there because they are going to punish you. You essentially have to be perfect against a team like Wyndham Woods and make no mistakes in your own end and then also try and defeat their defense, which is a tall order to ask anybody, uh, especially a young team like Warren Hills. Winton Woods won the toss and took possession to start the game, so they will kick off to Walnut Hills to begin the second half. And with the 44-0 score, we will have a running clock in the second half with a squib kick getting us underway. And one of the up men diving onto it at the 38-yard line for Walnut Hills. And that's how the second half will commence. Eastern Cincinnati Conference opener for these two teams. Gets no easier for Walnut Hills next week as they face off with Kings in week three. For Winton Woods, it's at West Claremont next Friday night. TJ Nelson and the Walnut Hills offense making their first appearance of half number two. You 
sweep coming to the near side. And a nice spin move. Israel Bradford with a gain of three to his own 41 yard line before he is wrapped up on the play by TJ Buck. Second and seven for the Eagles from their own 41. Nelson finds the slot man, Samarco. Samarco was a factor in the first half, and he leans ahead for a gain of six. It'll be third down and one. Samarco had two catches for 15 yards, but he was targeted with frequency. Yeah, he was a great player and uh, targeted often, and they just target him again right there. He just finds kind of the cushion in the zone, sits there, and uh, waits for the pitch and catch. Nicely done. On third and short, option far side. Pitch to Jones will reach the first down marker and a little extra. Out beyond midfield to the Winton Woods 49-yard line. It's a gain of four for Mikey Jones. First and 10, Walnut Hills. You see Walnut Hills with a little bit of a hurry up right now, obviously because of the deficit they're in. But uh, the past two plays, the, uh, the pitch on just sweep and also the option right there went, went well. Nelson to throw, lobs it up far side, incomplete, he had a man out there. Looks like it was Bradford at the 15 yard line who could not quite snatch it out of the air. Two defenders out there. One of them is down and injured. It appears to be Ty Bowler, six foot junior, who is down at the Winton Woods 15 yard line. And the clock will stop with the injury. Again, we have a running clock in the second half with Winton Woods holding a 44-0 lead. We may need to see the replay on it, but it appeared Bradford may have lost that ball in the light as he looked back and he was in position to catch the ball. He had actually outrun the two defenders and the ball just wasn't where he thought it would be. Yeah, that was actually a really nice deep pass. And just uh, just maybe one more step, he would have been right there. But I think you're right. I think he lost in the lights. Nice route, though, especially getting past those two defenders. Uh, excellent job. What you're seeing from Walnut Hills is actually a pretty good start. I mean, the first half, they, they tried those jet sweeps, and the pitches were bobbled. This time it's clean. They had an option route they did to the left-hand side. That was a clean pitch. Uh, things are going smoothly for Walnut Hills now. Maybe it's the nerves in the first half, uh, first opening game of the season. Uh, but but so far, uh, uh, even that deep pass, even though it was missed, that's a great throw. And when the game doesn't begin the way you want, and you know the caliber of opponent you're going up against, if you're feeling any anxiety coming into the game, it doesn't lessen when it's 14 nothing. Exactly, and I think it's telling too for Walnut Hills, uh, you know, they're down by a lot, and the odds are that they are not going to be the victors in this game. But it's really a mental state. You know, are you going to give up this early, or are you going to keep trying and trying and trying uh, and, and improve upon the deficit? So give credit to them for keep, you know, trying. Ty Bohr on his feet, walking with support on either side of him, slowly to the near sideline. And that's been great to see tonight that any player we've seen go down injured has been able, whether with help or without, to walk off the field. Yeah, you never like to see an injury, but it's always good to when you do see one they able to walk off the field. It'll be second and 10 for Walnut Hills in Winton Woods territory at the 49 yard line. Four receivers, two to each side. Nelson against a five-man rush, overthrows his intended target, Bradford, incomplete. I think he thought Bradford was gonna head a little bit deeper in that route because it looks like Smarco was in the same area where they both finished their routes. Uh, maybe a little miscommunication by the receivers. Ideally, in your route combinations, you prefer that your receivers gravitate to different areas. Right, you prefer to have layers. Like a bunt cake. <laughs> On third and 10, Nelson hemmed in the pocket. And he will simply throw it away to the far side, incomplete. Didn't 
didn't matter what levels his receivers were on, they were all locked up and the pass rush converged. It'll be fourth and 10. The pass rush has been tormenting Nelson the entire game. Right there, it's evidence again. Uh, the only positive, he didn't take a sack. And you talk about those small progressive steps. We saw him hold the football and take a loss a couple times in the first half. If it's not there, there's no shame in just getting rid of that football and calling it fourth down. Mm -hmm. Live for another day. Cruz Garcia standing at his own 38 to punt. Picks the snap up off the turf, and his kick will be a line drive kick. Spears from his own 19 up the middle of the 25, and now he will stutter step his way to the outside. Can he get to the edge? Not quite. Casey Spears, his own form of electricity every time he touches the ball. A return of 16, and with 7.26 to go in the third quarter, Winton Woods will see the ball for the first time in the second half. Leading 44 nothing. There was a holding penalty. So maybe not at the 35. Looks Almost. like a block in the back on. Not sure who was on, Winton but. Woods. Yeah. I'm gonna guess it's on whoever actually blocked somebody in the back, but. Hey, you never know. I think it occurred when uh, Casey Spears was making that, that corner run. So what you're saying is that Casey Spears on that play was too athletic for his blockers. He was, he was too fast for his yes. blockers, yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. And for those of you watching at home, you can see on the replay the illegal block. Good intentions. Next time, better execution. First down, handoff as Winton Woods will start from their own eight. So that penalty, a 27-yard impact. Trey Cornish with a gain of five. It'll be second down and five. Cornish with a couple touchdown runs in the first half, helping Winton Woods separate. It'll be Cornish again using the stiff arm, trying to get to the edge, and it's well defended by Walnut Hills. Really well done by the linebacker there. Skiing the backfield, not getting, not getting stuck with that stiff arm and fighting through it. Give credit to Alex Milloff on the play. Good lateral pursuit, sideline to sideline. Caught a loss of a yard. It'll be third down and six for Winton Woods. Midway through this third quarter. With the running clock. Three receivers, one tight end to the far side. Running back to the left of the quarterback. Quick throw to the far side. Catch made at the 12 yard line by Dalen Jolman. It is Sante Stort Jr., the quarterback now, as Van George, his night likely over. Play only good out to the 16 yard line, so it'll be a couple yards short of the first down. Winton Woods will have a fourth down in short, and we may see the first punt of the night from the Warriors. Yeah, I like what Winton Woods is trying to do there. They obviously, Wana Hills is ready for the run now. Um, their linebackers creeping to the scrimmage line. And so they're trying to pop one out to the outside. Their skill players are going to be getting space, pick up the first down. Nearly did it. Uh, the nice tackle in the, in the open space by Bronco Hills. When we talked about in the first half, you get this kind of lead. Opportunity knocks for your backups to get those valuable game reps. And we see Stewart in at quarterback. And give him some confidence. Simple throw. One-on-one -on -one out there. Plenty of cushion. Exactly. You know, nothing get a quarterback more comfortable than just a simple pitch, pitch and catch to the right receiver and just let them work in space. 
And if that receiver gets loose, the box score is only going to say 88 yard touchdown pass. So as far as the quarterback is going to tell anyone who didn't see it, oh yeah, I threw that thing 70 yards downfield. It was a bomb. The quarterbacks always take the credit. <laughs> Casey Spears Jr. throwing out his first punt of the night. Another aspect of his skill set as the ball will roll dead at the Winton Woods 48. 32 yard punt. 423 remaining. Third quarter, 44 0 Winton Woods was the halftime score. It is the current score. Jonathan Schwab, Chris Mead with you on Waycross Community Media. Winton Woods shut out Walnut Hills in the matchup between these two teams last year. You know that that Winton Woods defense wants to do the same this year. Yeah, make a repeat. First and 10, the ball marked at the Winton Woods 46. Handoff and in the backfield, the Winton Woods defense is swarming. It's a loss of three. Yeah, just excellent game by their guy. A little swim move there and just wrapping up the, the runner. Loss of three back to the Winton Woods, 49. Second and 13. Shotgun for Nelson. Jones to his left. Nelson, sidearm swing to the near side, is caught, breaking a tackle and going near the 35. Making that catch, Mark Brown Bronson. They needed 13, they got 14, first and 10 for Walnut Hills. Yeah, really great job by Nelson there. A little bit of a low snap, caught it, uh, got his foot placement right, and nice little sidearm. Kind of reminds me of a little Vince Young right there. Vince Young, how old are we? <laughs> On first and 10, the handoff will pick up nothing. Again, Winton Woods stout at the line of scrimmage. Just to be clear, we're talking about Texas Longhorns. Vince Young, not Tennessee Titans. Vince Te Texas Longhorn, yes. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. not Tennessee Titans. No, okay. No. The, uh, the Rose Bowl to remember Vince Young. Okay, that one. Nelson. Nowhere to go, and he will take the sack. It'll be third down and long. Yeah, Winwood's did a great job. They brought a little bit of a blitz there. It's like, I'm going to say Jermaine Matthews might have got around the corner a little bit. Caused Nelson to step up prematurely. He's all in a, in a tackle. And you've got to love a kid like Matthews who, in a 44 0 game, he wants to be out there. That's a competitor. Yeah, absolutely. It's great when your starters don't want to be benched, even during a blowout. Third down and 12 from the Winton Woods 37. Nelson, full roll left. Launches to the end zone incomplete. He threw into double coverage for Bradford and the coverage was airtight. It'll be fourth down. Now, I agree with you, you respect a kid who wants to be out there. In, in part because you know you're gonna have some younger teammates, some backups out there. And so that's on field leadership that you can provide. Now if that's me, I'm thinking, I've got a 16 week grind if everything goes the way I want it to go. I, I'm putting the beach shoes on. I'm getting myself a little Gatorade, a little water, may throw a little half lemon in there. And I'm kicking the feet up, my night's done. So kudos to Jermaine Matthews because you do love a kid who wants to be out there under all circumstances. Right, yeah, you know, if I was Jermaine Matthews, yeah, I will probably clocking out a little bit early, but. <laughs> teach their own but I think that goes back to their mentality of being state champions you know their starters want to play they want to be there they're having fun playing and that's the mentality you want uh, injured man down and now as I say it up jogging to the near sideline walking over to the near sideline 
under his own power is Tyler Cox. 5'5", sophomore. A minute eight to go in the third, 44-0 Winton Woods. Fourth down and 12 for Walnut Hills. For Walnut Hills, why the heck not go for it? Yeah, you got nothing to lose. As they say in Connect Four. <laughs> and instead, they apparently not a fan of board games. Yeah. They will punt. High snap this time, and the punt goes straight up in the air. Is it blocked? And it's caught by a Winton Woods player who's taking it down the near sideline. How about that? How about the awareness? And he is justifiably mobbed by his teammates. What a play. I couldn't tell if that was blocked or if it was just a punt that went straight up. Ah, uh, went off its own player. And then a clean catch. Looks like it was Donald Robinson the second, a freshman. What the, the awareness on that play by the freshman, that's amazing. Kudos to him. That's a great point, to have that football IQ when you're not even old enough to drive. Timeout taken by Walnut Hills as Winton Woods will start at the 27 of Walnut Hills with 37 seconds left in the third quarter. 44-0, the Winton Woods lead. All the scoring in this game came in the first half. Five offensive touchdowns for the Warriors, as well as a Cameron Calhoun 100-yard interception return for a touchdown. And this is really impressive from Winton Woods. You can see when a team is playing to their own standard and not the standard of the opponent. They came out with the best kind of malicious intent this evening. And that's credit to coaching. Establishing that mentality, that champion mentality comes from the head coach and then flows down from your seniors to your underclassmen. Hand off on first down. Looks like a gain of four on the final snap of the third quarter. So everybody go from the left to our right as we have 12 minutes left from Mark Stadium. Winton Woods with a 44-0 advantage over Walnut Hills. I'm probably not breaking news to anyone. The running clock speeds things up a bit. They don't call it a jogging clock. Chris, to your point about the way that culture filters down, that play by Donald Robinson II, if I'm a big picture Winton Woods fan, that might get me as excited as anything because that to me tells me that culture is filtering all the way down to where your freshmen are embodying what you want your program to look like. So when your Cameron Calhouns, when your Trey Cornish, when your Jermaine Matthews Juniors have moved on and they're playing their trade at the collegiate level, you know you've got guys who are, again, the embodiment of what your program needs to be and will make sure that the players around them will be that. Yeah, you got to give credit to the seniors mentoring these young kids and making them have them a championship mentality. On the first play of the fourth quarter, the... Exchange between the quarterback and the running back never happened, and Stewart ended up on his stomach at the 25-yard line. So it'll be a third down, and they'll mark it at the 24. So a third down and seven coming. The officials emphatically telling the press box to make sure it is a running clock. Three receivers to the near side, one to the high side. Stewart peeks over to the near sideline. Like 
Play clock running down, and Stewart will roll near side. Under pressure. Fires to the end zone, and it is broken up incomplete. Beautiful breakup in the end zone made by Mark Bronson. The pass was intended for Charles Mathis the second, 5'11 sophomore. It'll be fourth down. Now you credit Mark Brunson there, did a great job, did not panic. He, and, and put his hands up, but not put his hands on the receivers and broke up that pass nicely. Uh, it's such a difficult play too when that DB is in the trail position like that. It's a position where you often see pass interference, as you said. Well, apparently we did see pass interference. I didn't see the flag. I, I did not either. But the 15-yard penalty says pass interference, and it's first and 10, Winton Woods from the 12. First down run will net a couple of yards to the 10. Winton Woods looking for the first points for either team in the second half. The 44-0 Winton Woods lead was the score at the intermission. Thanks to the production truck, sounds like it was roughing the pass or was a penalty as Stork keeps on the play fake and he will coast into the end zone for a Winton Woods touchdown. The first points of the second half belong to the road team and Winton Woods with a 50-0 lead. Yeah, the quarterback there did a great job reading reading his man on that read option, pulling the ball, and then just taking it to the house. Nicely done. Made those linebackers sit a little bit in their stances, follow the running back, and then just went right around. And this gives an opportunity for Stewart, the backup quarterback, now to run a two-point play. So, again, more of those valuable repetitions. Hand off, off right guard, and it looks like it is a successful conversion, it is. Nice move in the hole there. And about two yards deep in the end zone. Yeah, again, you gotta get credit to the offensive line, getting to the second level, getting those linebackers, and just paving the way for the running back to get in. 9.40 left in the game. 52-0, the Winton Woods lead. Last year, this was a 7-0 game going to the fourth quarter. Winton Woods pulled away with two fourth quarter touchdowns. No such drama this evening. Now a little bit of a different story. For Winton Woods, going back to that one and two start last year, they won 12 of their last 13 games to win the state. So with the victory tonight, and I feel moderately confident we can call this one a win in the books. I don't foresee the result shifting. 14 wins in their last 15 games. Unbelievable. At, at any level, it's unbelievable. Spears will kick it away. The line drive kick up the middle is picked up at the 26 yard line. We turned out beyond the 35 yard line. With the wide separation between the two teams, running clock, we've had that throughout the second half. Walnut Hills will begin on offense at their own 37 yard line. Now 
Nelson collects the shotgun snap, and this time the running back loses his footing in the backfield. A loss of three back to the 34-yard line. Yeah, Warner Hill's been having trouble in the backfield, whether it be footing, bobbling balls, just tough time in the backfield, and especially against this front from Wynn Woods, costly. The 11 Winton Woods puts out there on defense, plenty good enough without adding the 12th man known as the Turf Monster. Yeah. And again, some nifty ball handling. This time works in the favor of Walnut Hills as Nelson was able to get it to Jones, who will pick up five out to the 39-yard line. Third down and eight forthcoming. Five-man rush on third down, and Samarco's wide open on the far side. He'll stay on his feet into Winton Woods territory where he steps out of bounds at the 49-yard line. A gain of 12, first and 10 for Walnut Hills. Walnut Hills searching for their first second half points of the season. Scored their lone touchdown in the second quarter last week at Withrow. Nelson. Blitz on. Deep throw looking for Bradford who adjusts and makes a beautiful catch. Inside the 20. There is a flag down. Chris, you've got it. Looks like it is pass interference. Yeah, I think, I think he caught the ball even with defensive pass interference. Remarkable catch. Finding his turning around and finding the ball while also being tackled. Amazing. And I love what the official did. If it's defensive pass interference, just let everyone know and let's move on. He made the catch. That's efficient officiating. Ball at the 17-yard line after the 32-yard pass play. Biggest offensive play of the night for Walnut Hills. Nelson. Oh my God, it's terrible. Heaves it up far side. And even though I believe it was caught by Samarco, it was caught about five yards outside of where it's deemed acceptable by the football rule book. Yeah, wonderful play by Samarco there. Just, you know, obviously out of bounds. But the catch was even better. That cheer you may be hearing, a cheerleader just did front clips all the way along the track right in front of us. Pretty impressive athletic feat. On second and 10 from the 17. Same look, far side end zone. Is that in bounds? No. Incomplete. That pass on the far side was intended for Bradford and he was oh so close to getting that left foot down. Great work by our camera crew. Looks like the front of the left foot may have been on the right chalk. It'll be third and 10. You gotta give credit to one of my hills. Really nice deep passes even though they're incomplete. There is an injured Winton Woods player lying on his back at the Winton Woods 26. That cheer, by the way, was a cheerleader doing backflips all the way along the length of the track. Like Chris, she's doing about 40 yards worth of backflips. I cannot articulate how dizzy I would be. I, I watched that and in just pain and in awe. <laughs> in your life, how many front or backflips have you done? I think maybe one on trampoline, a front flip. Okay. Not okay. graceful, no. That's one more than I have done. Uh, it's tremendously skillful, though, and credit to the young woman who is showing off the hard work that she has put in to master that skill set. Yeah, really nice job. It's part of the charm of Friday Night High School football because it means so much to the bands. It means so much to the cheerleaders. It means so much to the families. You schedule your Friday nights for anywhere from 10 to 16 weeks around this. And 
even if you're not a football player, there's so much that goes into this and so much pageantry around it that really captures the attention and the hearts of a community. Yeah, and I think you hit it right on the nail. It, it, Friday Night Lights is a community event. You know, you got cheerleaders, you got fans, you got the band. Everybody has something here. And although there's a primarily a football game going on, it just brings people together as a community. And it's just great to see. And you mentioned at the outset of the broadcast, when you only have five home games, you only have so many opportunities to show out for the home fans. That applies for the cheerleaders and the band as well. Yep. They'll travel on the road and they'll get their number of opportunities to perform and to show the work that they've put in. But only half of those are going to come in front of the home fans where your family may not be able to make it to road games. So it's extra special for these kids when they get to show what they've put so much time and heart and effort into at home. It, it really is, yeah. I mean, just being in front of your fans, being in front of your family, uh, and being in front of your community, uh, nothing better than that. And just like you said, you only have five opportunities at home, so we'll make the most of it. Injured man still being looked at. The Winton Woods player. We have 5-12 left in the ball game. 52-0, the Winton Woods lead over Walnut Hills. Let's recap how we got there. In the first half, it was a long winding road. In the second half, much like the Cameron Calhoun interception return, much more point A to point B. Winton Woods took the opening kickoff and drove six plays, 55 yards, James Minor, a five yard touchdown run, the two point conversion no good, with 10.23 to go in the first quarter, it was six nothing, Winton Woods. After Walnut Hills went three and out, the ensuing punt snap went over the head of the Walnut Hills punter, Juan Cruz Garcia. He was tackled all the way back at his own 17. And one play later, Trey Cornish said, thank you, I appreciate it. 17 yard touchdown run, the two-point conversion was good, and with 9.14 to go in the first, it was 14-0, Winton Woods. Winton Woods was not done in the first quarter yet. Van George, 66 yards to Casey Spears down the left side. The two-point conversion again successful on a run by James Minor. With 2.58 to go in the first, it was 22-0, Winton Woods. That was the score after one. In the second, Walnut Hills drove down to the 10 yard line, had a fourth down from there. The fourth down pass by TJ Nelson, intercepted by Cameron Calhoun, who took it goal line to goal line. 100 yards, the two point conversion run unsuccessful. And with 10.28 to go in the second, 28 nothing the Winton Woods lead. The Warriors would add to that lead nearly three minutes later. Trey Cornest up the gut and loose 42 yards to the end zone two-point conversion pass from george to tramar harris good with 738 to go in the second 36 nothing the winton woods lead the final score of the first half casey spears taking the direct snap from the quarterback position a six-yard run he then repeated the feed on the two-point try and with 244 to go in the first half we had our halftime score of 44 nothing Winton Woods. With that halftime score, the second half began with a running clock. The only score of this half, also for Winton Woods. As backup quarterback Siante Stewart Jr. keeping on his own, the 10 yard touchdown run, two point conversion successful, and with 940 remaining, we had the score that we have right now. Winton Woods 52. Walnut Hills, nothing. It's literally been, un I mean, just unreal. Like just 100 mile an hour, and, and really it started probably the Monday before the state championship. For him to come to a new program that was a winning program, and for him to lead us to a state championship. 24 more minutes. 
24 more minutes. Ain't satisfied. Ain't satisfied. It's a mentality. It's a mentality. As a football coach, unless you're one of those top-notch programs where football is already important, 75% of the coaches out there are trying their hardest to, to try to make football important at that place. You know what I mean? So um, coming here was, you know, that that was that's already been established, you know, for for 30 plus years. Breaks a tackle into the open field. He's gone. Touchdown, Dominique Brown, and the Warriors are back on top, 26 to 21. I'm old enough and supposed to be mature enough to realize when you're blessed. And, and, and that's kind of been my thing to these kids, not take a day of this for granted, because it is such a special place. My last head coaching position, I was fired. State of Ohio Coach of the Year in 12, I'm fired in 18. I didn't get in this to have a career record. I got in this career to change lives, man. You know what I mean? To give kids second chances and to be a dad that maybe a kid don't have a dad. I think that's what says the most about him is his passion for not only the game of football, but just helping young men. Everything we do, we're trying to educate these guys on how to do things, not only at this level, but hopefully prepare them for the college and if they're lucky to the, get to professional. But his passion is what I see every day. The way he talks to the kids, the way he believes in the kids, is, his passion is number one. These kids are different. I don't think these guys are satisfied. You know, we're happy, we can be happy. And I believe that's where we're at right now. We're happy, but we're not satisfied. You can ask them. I, I've told them for weeks, well, maybe before these playoffs started, we're gonna play football as long as we wanna, as this group, this, this circle right here of dudes wanna play football. And here we are in, in the state championship game, and I don't think these guys are satisfied. All right, so the first step that you take in your hand placement are the most important things in that. When he gets the football, I want him to see a line. And our line is attacking. The joy in this run right now, though, is that nobody believed these kids could do it. Heck, I don't even know if we all thought they'd do it after we started off one and two. Every week we got better and better. Yeah, we started out a little rough, but we were playing the two best teams in this area in our division uh, in Kings and LaSalle. For these kids to buy in and fight through the adversity, I mean, it, just says, it says a lot about what this community's all about. It says a lot about what these kids are all about and what this program has always been built on. It means a lot for my alma mater to be in the state championship game. Just because of back in 2017, we couldn't get the job done, we couldn't finish it. So my hope is for them to go back and finish it. It's been a pride thing, the big name players. I mean, they've had guys around here playing really, really good defense for a long time. We've got some really, really good football players over there right now. They have just got it done time and time again. We were on the home side, and I tell you, it was electric between our band and the cheerleaders. I, you know, when, when you're noticing this kind of stuff with headphones on, you, you know something good's going on. <laughs> exactly. That was the probably the best atmosphere I've ever been a part of on, on Thursday evening. I believe we had more, more fans than they did. It's great to be on top. It's great to dethrone the champions. Now we are at the top of the mountain. And as anybody knows, it's tough to stay on top of the mountain. You have to fight, scratch, claw, and prepare because everybody's coming after you. I, don't even, I can't even express it. I can't even express it. I, but I can look at them kids, man, and, and, and tell that we've done something really, really great. We was one and two. They doubted us. I promise you, they doubted We was one and two on the season. They doubted us. It was about time they came home. I told you. We, 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 we the boys, bro. We the boys. We the boys. Everybody doubted us. Just resilient. Even tonight, throughout the season, Week to week, and even in a state championship game, we found a way to make it interesting, but, but, but tough enough, resilient enough to just get it done. Everything I do, all the nine picks, all the tackles, all the fumbles, it's for these boys right here. We made it. Let's get it, baby. We start on one and two. We start on the three. Make this 13 and three with a three on our bigger one. Crazy.
easy to get it, to get this ring. And this is this is kind of home for me now. I always tell everybody I graduated from Forest Park, but this is home. And for me to come back here in our first year and let's, and let's pull this off with some kids that not a lot of people believe in, I mean, you can't ask for anything more because this is the building block for something that I feel like we can build for a long time. I told these kids since day one, this ain't about me, man. This is about this place, continuing what this place has done and, and always trying to just do whatever we can do to just keep climbing, you know, keep climbing. They believe in their teammates and, and, and that's a special thing. You know, we're representing not only Forest Park and Green Hills, but we're representing Cincinnati. But it's so rewarding to see these guys, you know, just, just being great people, great people. And, and to me, the older I get, the more I realize how important, that, that, that's the most important thing. You know, I mean, great, great people. You know, in the grand scheme of things, the wins and losses are awesome and playing for rings and that, all those opportunities. But man, we're here to make this world a better place, man. And, and, and I'll tell you, that, that's probably the best thing about this place is seeing some of these young men grow up and start thinking more. Welcome back to Mark Stadium at Walnut Hills High School. Just a moment ago, a rousing ovation as Jamonte Thornton, a 6'3", 265-pound sophomore, wheeled off the field on a stretcher, receiving fist pounds and encouragement and support from teammates. We have 5'12 remaining in the football game. Winton Woods with a 52-0 lead over Walnut Hills. When we return to game action, Walnut Hills will have a third and 10 from the Winton Woods 17-yard line. Trying to find the scoreboard for the first time this evening. And now, Chris, when you think about the players, you have to get your mind back on the task at hand, which is very difficult. And also, do you have to get yourself a little bit loosened up again because everybody in the stadium just standing for about 15 minutes in real time. Yeah, all that's a little bit true. I saw some of the Wooden Woods players actually stretching on the sidelines, doing some warm-up drills just to stay loose. But it's really for Warner Hills. It was kind of the flow of the game, took a pause all of a sudden. So we'll have to see if they are uh, able to, to get back into that vibe they had going. Blitz on, Nelson rolls to his right. Loops it towards the end zone, fight for the football incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Obviously, we don't know the nature or seriousness of the injury. It does reinforce, though, we praised earlier a kid like Jermaine Matthews wanting to stay on the field in a blowout. It's the other side of why as a coach you, you really ruminate on whether or not to leave any starters on the field because as long as you're competing out there, you can get hurt. Mm -hmm. Nelson in big trouble, gets away from one man, throws it up for grabs and it will land out of bounds 
And the Winton Woods defense holds yet again. What a juggernaut performance by the Warriors D. Yeah, Warriors D did a great job right there. Putting pressure on the quarterback, making him throw the ball. We did one, two. Uh, really nicely done. As the Winton Woods offense takes possession with 338 left and running with a 52 point lead. But to go back to what I was saying about there's the respect for a player who still wants to be on the field. It's a sick feeling as a coach if you leave a guy who is integral to your state championship hopes on the field in a 44, 52 point game and that guy get, gets injured. Yes. And it, it can be a freak thing. Absolutely, it's just, it's just really unfortunate and uh, you hate to see it. Clock still moving. The ball has not yet been spotted ready for play. And now the Winton Woods defense celebrating and running off the field. I'm not totally sure what just happened. Did the officials forget the downs? Did they just realize it was fourth down? Because it looks like the Winton Woods offense is now coming out. Yeah. It uh, looks like looks like the law and the action didn't just uh, have an effect on the players, but maybe also the refs. You, you know how it is. The refs are not young like the kids. Yeah. So we're getting up near 10 o'clock. I'm sure we're hitting some bedtimes. It's a lot to ask the refs to be at their razor sharpest. Yeah. And I think instead of being even remotely critical, I'm going to praise them. In the end, it took five of them, and they got it right. Yeah, I give credit. That's, that's the positive in this. And almost hilariously, with the running clock, yeah, it took a minute of game time to figure that out. We could have lost the rest of the game just trying to figure out whose ball it was. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> First down run for Winton Woods. Now what I'm curious about is how did the ball go from being spotted at the 17 to the 9? So was there something that happened, penalty or otherwise, that we didn't see? I don't know. Right now it's a bit of a mystery. Second down and about eight to go with a minute 42 left. Winton Woods working with a 52 nothing lead. Another running play. Another couple yards. The running back for the Warriors. Looks like Quincy Murray Jr. listed as a defensive back. Moonlighting as a running back. And as we pointed out at the time of night, literally moonlighting. Yeah. Final minute from Mark Stadium. And if the officials are feeling charitable, this may be our final snap. And we have our first pre-snap infraction of the entire night. And it looks like a timeout was called before the false start, so we don't have a pre-snap infraction. We do have 42 seconds left. We do have the fans right in front of us absolutely going bonkers. Over what, I don't know. I think it was some sort of dance the cheerleaders were doing. What was it a dance off? I think it, I think it was, and now the uh, Warner Hills cheerleaders will do their uh, their dance. Okay. So 20 years later, we've yeah. got bring it on. Exactly. So while the while the Warner Hills Winton Woods game is coming to an end, we now have the dance off starting. Okay. Yes, this is bring it on. 
high school, real lifestyle right now. I'm guessing Kirsten Dunst, Gabrielle Union, Eliza Deshku, none of them down there? No, nah, don't see any of them. Okay, fair enough. Murray again on the handoff, out past the 15 to the 17, and with 25 seconds left, that's going to be the final snap of the game. Winton Woods going away on the road, a 52 nothing win, is like that's what they're going to record. Chris, your final thoughts? Winton Woods looks like a championship team. They look like they uh, you know, left off where they started last week and just cruised to a victory. Walnut Hills had some good moments, had some good drives, just couldn't capitalize. A lot to learn from, a lot of things that they can they can build upon too. So uh, this is early in the season and uh, they have a lot to look forward to. It is a fun. The score tonight from Mark Stadium, Winton Woods 52, Walnut Hills nothing. With the win, Winton Woods improves to 2 and 0 on the year. Walnut Hills falls to 0 and 2. And in case you were wondering, the winner of the dance off, everybody. We're all winners. For our entire Waycross community media crew and my broadcast partner, Chris Mead, I'm Jonathan Schwab. The final score one more time, Winton Woods 52, Walnut Hills nothing. This has been high school football on Waycross community media.